Sorry, you're going to just be stuck with me today, but I hope to make it a little interesting. Uh, hi, I'm Xavier. I'm the chief engineer of the Electric Race Car Team. Um, Integer Electric Racing is the program I work for, and I'd like to show you a little bit about the projects we've made so far, what our plan is for this year, and uh, um, see what you think about it. Well, this is Jewel. This is uh, the 2017 2018 race car, um, and actually, currently, the test bed for a lot of our prototype designs. Um, we, we are using it this year to verify some of the designs that we've already come up with um, and get real life data to extrapolate upon and verify what we see in simulation. Um, but I'll elaborate more on the sub teams when I get to there. Alright, so background. So FSA Electric is an SAE event, it's an SAE design competition. I really think SAE created these to help solve an issue that I see with um, the collegiate experience where we have a lot of technical knowledge, but not very little hands-on, uh, very little reason to become hands-on. So now this competition inspires all of us people to push ourselves to this next limit and grow and become better engineers after doing so. Um, and it, it's, uh, it really just comes from, it's like a ball, the FCA Electric is like the newest of the competitions. Actually, I scratched that. As of two years ago, they added a uh, autonomous electric. Um, but it's only in Europe right now, and we'll, maybe one day we'll switch there. But as for today, we still drive it. That's the fun part. Now, under the team breakdown, so we have 10 specific uh, sub teams, each with a uh, very important role on the car. Um, actually, nine of them are on the car, and one of them is off on our uh, marketing, um, business outreach, and sponsorship. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't break down into people. We have 62 people as part of our program. Um, so that's averaging around like six per sub team, but some some obviously need uh, larger uh, manpower. For example, our electric team, our electric, our electronics team is about eight to, or it's nine people currently, versus like a small team like power team would be like five. Um, but uh, all of them are chosen per role, so each person has a de designated role, and they know exactly what part or sub component they're working on for the car and that they will own that part. Um, so when they come back the year after, they can tell you like, that that is my part. Like, that's what I, I spent my time working on, and that is what I accomplished. Um, and we hope to give that satisfaction and that growth to all of our, all of our engineers. Um, so about budget. Uh, sorry to give you the actual numbers for the like, percentage-wise, but the largest spending consistently is batteries and uh, suspension is one of the largest ones this year. Um, uh, as for the money breakdown, um, uh, the school school funding through Europe and SDP um, gives us like two to five thousand uh, member fees uh, with the ten a hundred dollar class fee, and then with uh, all the volunteers also paying that same amount with the same responsibility. Um, we do about eighteen thousand in that, and then about ten thousand in donations um, and sponsorship. Uh, time available, so we require all of our members to be three unit um, or above. All sub team leads are all four unit. All is, all the every person on the team is at least twelve uh, hours a week. Um, verify through timesheets to the sub team leads, um, as well as uh, I, I as the chief engineer do an audit process uh, with my engineers just to check up with their progress and see what I can do to help them. But also check on make sure they're they're meeting their uh, the contract with which we all we all agreed to at the beginning of the year. Um, for goals and objectives, I thought I'd just give you the broad. I think objectives are, are best stated with the big picture in mind. So really, we have three big pictures, and I, I'm thinking this as a program, not a, not solely as a project, because uh, I, I believe the program is more important than just the project itself. So the first one, actually for me, is to develop to develop our engineers to be better engineers after this program. Um, with like we 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 require like GD and T training, and we'll provide that and like. We'll, we'll sit through and go through the design process so they understand how to take a problem and make a solution that actually meets all the requirements and then what it really feels to do that. Um, the second most is a competitive and my favorite one is serviceable um, uh, car for this 2018-2019 season. Um, serviceability is something I've ultimately realized over my four years on this program is that like, if you can't work on it, you usually break stuff while you're trying to work on it, you're not going to run very long and then you won't be competitive. Um, and three is to develop technologies for future years. We do have a portion of our team R&D long-term projects, 
the battery management systems, or four-wheel steering, that we don't plan to see this year, um, but we plan to get some real-life data in order to give future teams the opportunity to run that those sort of technologies if they choose if they see that fit. All right. As for I was going to go ahead and break down the requirements into the sub teams. Is that okay with you guys? Cool. Um, so this is the requirements for aero body and sensors. Um, you might one of the things might not sound like the others, but it's actually because there's a lot of exterior sensors that need to be packaged, and what better way to integrate it with the body than to make it their responsibility. Um, so uh, the aero body sensors team is uh, involved with covering the car, and although I hate to say it, part of that covering the car is focusing on the looks of it, because people really do judge the quality of your, of your product based upon how they see it. A perfect example is if you've seen that orange race car in Engineering Gateway, Epsilon, piece of shit in my opinion. Oh, sorry. But, um, uh, but it looks beautiful and every, like, people mention it year in and year out. So we're, we're, we're looking forward to make our car this year something that people will talk about um, and actually remember uh, as, a, as a benchmark of uh, this program. Um, as well as our first aero package this year. Um, and integration of the sensors within the body itself. Um, timeline is uh, is laid out. We're, we're on time right now, so we're in the concept development phase. Uh, we do concept development and then down selection through trade studies in order to find the the um, part that we feel best meets our requirements. Um, for batteries, uh, same also on timeline. The biggest part about batteries is uh, size reduction. Um, uh, allowing us to bring in a wheelbase from 72 inches with the help of chassis and powertrain to 63 inches is what we're, we're looking at right now. Um, and uh, better separation of more defined separation of low voltage and high voltage in wiring via color schemes and wiring, wire routing. And they're also on the timeline. So they're, they're just, they just met the design trees um, and we're just doing cooling, we're ju just doing uh, cooling Testing cooling prototypes uh, with uh, fog, um, with fog and um, high speed camera to verify our, our simulations for um, for chassis. Uh, chassis's biggest um, goals was uh, weight reduction of 50 pounds, um, a wheelbase reduction, uh, and removal rear. Um, they are also on on timeline. They met the design trees. Um, we are now entering the manufacturing phase. Uh, electrical, uh, electrical is um, there is more wave based because of the sheer amount of boards we uh, produce. Um, they're on time. They are set to meet this timeline. Um, we've, we've laid out who's working on what, what, what is being worked on. Um, and the second wave is the first. The second wave would not have a first in our First wave has people currently developing on it. Um, also on timeline. Embedded system, uh, their biggest thing is modular. Previous years we decided to be fully integrated and that led to um, unforeseen complications. So we were really thinking taking a step back and making something more modular and easier to service um, might, be, might make a greater product overall. Um, that's one of the biggest things we've been working towards. Um, as well as design OBD2 port, which if you, um, if you know what that is, uh, or if you don't know what that is, Every car since 2009 has an OBD2 port. So um, our, one of those systems, we actually hope to uh, have it plug into a production car um, and through um, our network through, with SCCA, uh, hope to one day um, provide funding for future teams by selling that, um, that product at a reasonable price. Um, human interface, human interface deals with all the human controls. Um, uh, done the ergo jig, we've, uh, we had expert, um, we had a target mark, Market demographic sit in and give feedback. Um, we're on set. We're on time to uh, meeting the design fees deadline. Um, and then they do all the packaging for electrical this year, which was a big it was a big issue of uh, ambiguity in in previous years. Um, powertrain powertrain's um, biggest goal was to uh, we found that even though we were able to able to provide forty kilowatts uh, via our battery pack which is uh, 400 amps at 100 volts. Um, we weren't effectively using it with the motor technology we were using, 
Um, and we, we, we did full motor characterization this, uh, this year um, and fa have found that uh, we were producing a large, it's called inductive kick, which basically like, it's, it's basically a DC motor lag. So like you, you basically would be using about 20 kilowatts when we, we would be expecting to draw at 40 um, due to the losses of imaginary power. Um, uh, so we're, we're prototyping a couple of different options to solve that, uh, including looking into other motor, um, motor technologies like Brussels DC which uh, were on the same both level. Suspension um, is, uh, I mean, they have a lot of requirements. You guys read fast and I can talk. Um, the big thing is that we now have a, uh, we have some prototype designs that we put on the current car. Um, that happened last weekend, um, and uh, we're looking for real life data um, in this upcoming week weekend uh, to verify that those designs that we put out um, will be feasible for our next, year, next year's car, or for this year's car, lithium. Um, and this is telemetry. Uh, telemetry is looking to take all the data that we're collecting from the car, um, parsing it, and uh, providing it to people in the way that they want to see the data, and the way it's useful for people who are servicing the car, who are driving the car, um, as well as transmitting it wirelessly so it's available real time. Um, those are all the sub-team requirements timelines and backgrounds. I believe that's all I have for you, but I would love to open the floor to any questions that you might have. Thank you for your time.